As you know, on BIS Today, our month of July is all about funding. And so today, I've got quite an exciting guest in the studio, somebody who's come all the way from the UK to join us to talk about funding in South Africa. Peter Bailey is heading up the South Africa Challenge, which brings people between the ages of 18 to 25 to Durban for a two-week leadership program and cultural exchange to push them to become more socially responsible and culturally aware young leaders. He also sits as the head of network development for Enactus UK alumni. Peter's just completed a future leaders program with Grant Thornton UK, specializing in small to medium-sized business support in the UK market, and in collaboration with Lend With Care, a microfinance organization. Peter is back in South Africa seeking a delivery partner for Lend With Care to aid startups. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you. So it's wonderful to have you once again in the country. I know that um, you've been here previously and you're working on a lot of very exciting opportunities. So what's your time been like since you've been back? Oh, it's been great. We've been here for the last week, um, met with quite a few of the different guys that we've been working with over the last couple of years. Sure. Um, yeah, no, it's been really good, really cool. good so far. So. so I think just to give people an idea of what you're about and what exactly you're working on, what is South Africa Challenge? So as you just described, South Africa Challenge is a two-week leadership program and cultural exchange. We're bringing out young people from across Europe. So we've yeah. got um, a small small selection of people from different countries in Europe, but mainly the UK base. So these guys are young, passionate, um, keen, to, keen to grow and learn. And we're coming out here to try and set up projects out here. So working on a variety of different initiatives from social causes through to kind of business initiatives as well. Sort of like a student cultural exchange program. Yeah, definitely. So bringing in that cultural exchange element, but also with um, a further element of how do you actually get something set up abroad? How do you get that feeling of... Um, actually taking a concept and an idea and taking it through to reality and actually trying to make it happen. So, Can you give us a run through of some of the projects that South Africa Challenge is currently working on that you're heading up? Yeah, sure. So um, the projects that I've been involved with, so I've been coming out here for three years now. One of the main ones that we ran last year was around the startup ecosystem within Durban. I was fascinated with the startup ecosystem, just learning more about it as a part of a research project that I did. And with that, partnered with um, NK, who I met last year. And together, we've been working on the Durban Hub initiative, which has been really great. Yeah. Um, we've also got a number of new initiatives this year. So one of them is called Inspire Tomorrow. So aiming to uh, partner up and provide mentoring to South African companies um, using UK businesses that we have contact with back at home. We've got another project looking into rape and sexual abuse within South Africa, yeah. so working with the Jess Forward Foundation at the moment, along with a number of other companies. So, yeah, no, it's been going really well so far. So a lot of those projects are particularly aimed at startup initiatives or startup culture, mm. which is, I, I know it's a particular focus on this show is why I'm very excited to be speaking to you and we're also going to talk a little bit more about the funding aspect but you were recently um, worked with Grant Thornton UK mm -hmm. and placed in their future leaders program that's specializing in a small to medium business focus in that particular market. Can you give us a, a little bit more insight into that? Yeah sure so um, while I was at university I was quite heavily involved in a number of different initiatives around the early stage startups within the university space right. um, so got approached by Grant Thornton to come in and work with them on their future leaders program so was working on uh, in particular the business growth service which is a UK government initiative to support small to medium sized companies with high growth potential within the yeah. UK market. So within that internship, um, I was working on um, invest investor relations programs, so looking at partnering investment with the startup community. So that can be anything through from venture capital, angel investment, crowdfunding, um, grant funding, anything around that space, uh, right through to working on leadership and culture within organizations and how you actually create an environment for change, essentially. How do you think that experience or what your experience has been like in the UK market compared to the South African market because you've you've been here enough to understand or the culture and people's mindset around startup what what's that experience like been between both markets I, I think it's fascinating because there's so many similarities and we had an event the other day that uh, I know you're able to come along and attend as well um, and you see so many similarities in some of the problems that people have in regards to starting up. So we talked about three key themes being um, access to mentoring, access to funding, and also um, just essentially those, getting those great ideas and actually making them happen. So um, I think there's, there's a lot of key themes that can come between the two markets. But also, I think within the UK market at the moment, from what I've seen so far, it seems like we're, we have a lot of support for 
startups, if that makes sense. So it's a yeah. very, very busy market. There's lots of different people trying to support the startup ecosystem. And I'm sure that there are here and we're trying to seek and find out who those people are and co collect them all together and make it a nice, clear ecosystem. To I think together. that's an interesting point you highlighted because yes, the, the UK startup market with initiatives like Startup Loans UK, which I know yeah. James Kahn and a couple of other key figures were hitting up. And I think just people's enthusiasm and ability to be able to access that, that funding compared to the South African um, space where people know that they need funding, they're looking for that access to finance, but sometimes that barrier to entry is so high because you don't maybe have all the criteria or elements in place. Mm -hmm. So I think having an initiative like what you're going to tell us about is going to be particularly interesting, which what is what we're going to come to now. You're working also, I think, through an initiative with Grant Thornton. Mm -hmm. um, you've managed to hook onto an organization, a microfinance organization called Lend With Care. That's correct. And so they started up a particular program. You're now in South Africa mm -hmm. to seek potential delivery partners for them. That's correct. What's that about? So microfinancing, so within the UK, one of the things that we've noticed a lot is um, a lot of people talk about bank loans and think, uh, when you think of fi finance for a startup, you think of a bank loan, but this sure. is like an alternative to that. So microfinancing, so the opportunity to bring the crowd together to, so lots of different people within an audience together to put in for a pot of money that can then be distributed to an individual um, yeah. who's passionate about trying to get their idea rolling. So the kind of sums of money we're talking about here uh, is kind of 50 pounds up to three and a half, four thousand pounds. So they tend to be at the micro end of the initiatives, um, but it just gives those companies that leg up and that start into the space. Um, so at the moment, Lend With Care works with a number of different um, organizations in Africa, um, but doesn't work with anyone at the moment in South Africa. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity and spoke to them a little bit about how do we find someone and who would fit your criteria for what type of organization you're looking for as a delivery partner here. What does this project aim to achieve? Because if they secure a delivery partner, what will, what will happen? It essentially gives the opportunity for the South African market, for the early stage entrepreneurs here, to get another route to accessing finance. So it gives a pot of money that's allocated to the different startups. Um, and so let's, let's take it back. So if you're investing onto the platform, you so say me and you went to invest on the platform, we could right. put a small sum of money into the platform together and then we could pick an entrepreneur that we feel passionate, so based on their profile that we see on the platform, and put a small amount of money behind them to get them to their objective. So they might put an objective down of raising, say, £100 that they need to buy a certain piece of equipment that can then allow them to actually get their business accelerated and get their business going. So we can come together to, to then do that and help them deliver that. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity to not be reliant on other people, yeah. but to actually allow us to use our networks that we all naturally have anyway, um, and actually bring those networks and allow a formalized process of actually getting that business going and getting it kick-started. So once this um, particular initiative has been established, mm -hmm. what, what prospective applicants, how will they need to apply? What will the criteria need to be? Can you just take us through a little bit? Yeah, so uh, I mean, there's loads more information on the website, so don't, don't take, take, yeah. take too much of um, everything that I'm saying now, but um, essentially it would give the, per so say you've got a business idea, you can go onto the platform, start to list down some of the different elements of your business plan, what you're trying to do, um, trying to identify if it's a key asset that you need to buy, what it is, why you need it, and then just essentially trying to sell yourself to other people on the platform so that they want to invest in you and then you know that you have a way that you're going to pay back this money essentially to those investors. So I was, I was trying to understand Lend With Care yeah. and um, what it's going to do in our particular market. So let me see if my understanding is correct, but it's almost like a, um, in a way, a crowdfunding type of platform mm. where people um, are able to look at a list of ideas or um, prospective business ventures that make sense, mm -hmm. the numbers may look good, or the passion or necessary ideas that it's addressing a particular market need. And based on that, you're able to say, well, here's some money, I'm going to loan it to you. Are you then taking equity in that business? Are no, you, no. what it's, are you doing? It's, so it's a purely, so it's, 
it's seen as um, so within Grant Thornton we do it within our company so like the leaders of the organisation will put in a small part into that and it's seen as kind of an internal sustainability and a CSR initiative if for lack of a lack of a better word um, so each of the entrepreneurs will have different terms based on uh, for interest on those loans but they're all uh, seen as socially responsible loans so you know these huge percentage loans it's not anything like that it's very much just a small percentage to, to pay back to essentially just secure the continuation of the platform for the future. It sounds almost like um, you would only be required to pay back a certain kind of loan if your business was sustainable enough. Yeah, es- essentially, yeah. That's exactly Wonderful. It, it sounds like it's going to address a massive need in our uh, industry or rather country particularly because SMEs have such a difficult time yeah. accessing finance and if you do need to access finance, you need to have the home, the car, and everything to go with it, and a massive client order book before you even think about getting funding from um, a traditional institution like a bank or a venture capitalist, and, and that's a completely different situation, right? It allows people to back people. So if I, if I believe in you as a person, I can back you because, because I know you rather than, or because I believe in what you're trying to do and I want to, I'm not necessarily putting you know, my mortgage behind you to try and do something, but I'm putting a small amount with lots of other people to try and support your initiative and make it happen. So I think it's that, it gives you that good feeling inside to do it. And, of course. And also, um, from the perspective of going between different markets, obviously the pound is, has been really strong recently against the RAND, so it gives a great opportunity for us to try and provide some um, advantage from that as well. So. Microfinancing sounds like uh, a lot like social entrepreneurship. I think that's, is that the basis you would say of it? Yeah, so uh, being social in investing, yeah. That would, that would be how I see it. Peter, you're the network head, let me see if I'm going to get this right, the network <laughs> head of Enactus UK alumni. Yes, that's correct. I, I m- no, understand no. that we um, have a South African arm, but what is this organization about? And is it directly linked to the other causes around startup and entrepreneurship that you're working on? Yeah, so um, Inaptus is an international organization um, working primarily in the university space. So uh, each university comes together to have a social uh, social business team, basically. Yeah. So a team that's focusing on social causes within their university. So it's uh, entrepreneurs in action for us is how Inaptus breaks down. Mm-hmm. Um, so within South Africa, you're actually hosting um, the World Cup this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, in Johannesburg. Um, so I'm really hoping I get the opportunity to come out for that. Um, so in the UK at the moment, we have an alumni network that essentially supports our um, university students who are actually going through the program, giving them the uh, kind of the skills, the access to some of the companies that we're now working in, and giving you that access to that huge network that's after. Um, that university space so it's also a great opportunity for us as alumni to kind of network between us because we feel that Inaptus is creating the next generation of social leaders so if we can all stick together and try and keep to that cause and keep working towards it we're much more likely to achieve it as a network rather than as an individual. Peter the first time I think I met you was at um, a hackathon Mm. that was hosted in conjunction with Durban Hub NK uh, and IT Varsity uh, a new kid on the block in terms of IT and app development. But the idea there, and I think what inspired me a lot from, you managed to bring the South Africa Challenge team forward. Everybody came around, people networked from different facets of life with different skill sets and kinds of IP. And it just made me realize how much we have to offer as a upcoming startup scene. Mm -hmm. But also very much aware, we have a serious awareness that you can't move forward until you have a certain kind of funding ability or you have a bit of capital to move forward. You've, this is your third time back in SA, you said. What are the dif- key differences you've noticed since your last visit here in the entrepreneurial space? I think every year I come back, you just see that the more of the passion to try and create this ecosystem and to make it work. I think, like, like we were just alluding to right at the start of the conversation, there's a lot of people in the space doing really great things. And there's a lot of people that are really passionate about trying to make entrepreneurship work. When you're talking about the unemployment rates and all, all of the other factors that are talking right at a macro level. We have a great opportunity and we are seeing that development of and coordination of all of the different initiatives. And sure. e- each time we come back, we're really seeing that cohesive and starting to bring it together. And this isn't going to be a slow process. These ecosystems take years and years and years to build. And I've seen that from a number of different ecosystems that I've traveled out to around the world. But I really feel that the attributes and the key characteristics within the Durban space from everything, and it sounds silly, but things like the beach being here, things like the physical space of um, some big companies around, 
Um, it, it, it just it has the feel that it's going to be an incredible cluster here in Durban, and that's that's why I love being a part of it, and that's why I love and want to keep coming back. What's your experience um, been like connecting with the larger corporates or larger companies now bringing this idea of micro lending, micro financing, and trying to connect with the different corporates to be able to push this type of funding? Because I don't think it's something that's commonplace, especially in our environment. Mm. Um, and if it is, then it's only restricted to very small instances where it might not serve the greater community. But I think that Lend with K is trying to implement something that will help serve the greater community. Yeah. So what's that experience I, been I, like? I mean, I think so. Um, Grant Thornton in the UK has been, uh, from my personal opinion, quite leading in that space. So, you know, we've, we've partnered up with Lend with Care as one of our internal sustainability initiatives um, and just essentially see it as a really key part. If we're talking about trying to create and um, trying to create this like new network of socially responsible businesses and people that are doing great things all around the world then we have to be committing to actually doing that sure. ourselves individually so um, yeah no I think that's okay and last words from you as to aspiring entrepreneurs what would your advice be I think you have to go out there and actually go for it grab it grab hold of every opportunity that you get access to and I think there's a tendency within entrepreneurs, um, especially we have a phrase which we use in the UK called wannabe entrepreneurs or that kind of generation. I think we have a tendency to think that if we put a post on Twitter or Facebook moaning about something that it might actually do something, whereas if we can just get up and go and go for these opportunities that are all around us and actually address it and be a part of that change, not expect someone else to do it, but you be a part of that change and be willing to stand up and go for it and just just see what happens and keep iterating as you go along the process. I think that's the biggest thing and biggest advice I would give to anyone. Don't let any barriers stop in your way, right? Of course. And before you leave us, what are your plans um, before you head back to the UK? You're here for the next three or four weeks? Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, going to be working with NK Moore on the development of Durban Hub. So we're working on a number of different initiatives to try and bring that space together like we were talking about. So we're going to be chatting to a number of different universities within the Durban area, right. as well as looking at some of those corporates that we were referring to earlier. Um, just to see how we can bring everyone together um, and just just to understand more about what's going on within the space at the moment I'd really like to see or, or really hope that we can start to get hookup dinner funded for the rest of the year so yes. that we can bring those kind of initiatives together and know that there's the sustainability of them so that every month you know that you can come back on the first Friday of the month to go to that initiative um, the same as I, I'd love to be able to think that by the end of the time that we go back that there's a couple of other initiatives like a few more hackathons that we can make sure that we've got sustainable funding for um, so yeah I know I think there's a, quite a few good and also the lend with care that we were referring to it would be fantastic to think that by the end of the time that I go back that I've got a list of organizations that I can share with lend with care a possible delivery partners possible delivery in the country partners. Um, so and all the information on what those delivery partners are, are on their website there's a list of about seven or eight key criteria that you have to be what is that so, website again uh, it's just lendwithcare.org. Lendwithcare.org. So, yeah, and there's a section on it called How It Works, which is where all the information is. Very quickly, are there any initiatives in the next couple of weeks or any events that will you can get people together, like the hookup dinner that we had uh, last week, that will particularly talk about funding for small businesses? Mm. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'd have to get back to you on that one. I'm sure that we can create something if there isn't already. That would be cool, I think, especially with it's Durban Hub getting, getting on board and maybe hosting another hookup dinner before you guys go back because I think that the South Africa Challenge team have brought to us a certain kind of experience mm -hmm. that sitting at the hookup dinner, some of the challenges we heard, most, I think 99% of the concerns raised by aspiring entrepreneurs sitting in that circle was around funding. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be incredible to, to hear you guys' yeah. thoughts on that. There'll definitely, because there'll be the, so I fly back on the 11th of August, so there'll be another hookup dinner before then, which will be the first Friday of August, right? So I'm sure that Great. that'll be Great, and we're going to tell our Biz Today viewers all about that because we've been pushing the hookup dinner yeah, as much nice. as possible. It's probably one of the spaces that's helping to really yeah. identify entrepreneurship and push yeah, that spirit. Yeah. Peter Bailey, it was lovely to have you in studio. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get you back when you're uh, visiting us again. Yep. Yeah. I hope that I'm back next year again. Cool, so and you can also tell us whether you found that service delivery partner for, yeah, yeah. for Lend With Care. That was Peter Bailey talking to us about Lend With Care, seeking uh, potential delivery partners in the country for microfinancing solutions, which is possibly one of the better ways for an SME or a startup to be able to access funding because we know that it's a real challenge in South Africa particularly. And when we come back, 
we will look at your diary of events. CAIT Management Symposium 2016. Staged on 25th February 2016 at Vodacom World Madran Johannesburg, you'll be able to get to grips with the latest trends, solutions and strategies you need to know on how to stay ahead in a fast changing environment. So be sure that you book your free ticket at itweb.co.za and remember that this event is coming up in February next year, Vodacom Madrand, so be sure that you get there. Next up, MMA Smarties Africa Forum. No, not the Smarties that you eat, which we all love so much, but Smarties Mobile Media uh, Marketing, or rather the Mobile Marketing Association Smarties Africa Forum is proudly brought to you by Unilever. And this will be held as part of the Lurie's Creative Week Durban. Now, if you know about the Lurie's Creative Week, it's usually a Cape Town haunt and one of the most popular events in the digital industry for the year. But this year, Durban's lucky to host the event and the MMA Smarties Forum will be part of that particular week. So the forum is a fantastic opportunity for agencies and marketers to join the Mobile Marketing Association of South Africa in an educational discussion on mobile media and marketing, of course. So be sure to get your ticket on that one. You'll be able to hear all about global, regional and local trends, learn about how to approach and build an award-winning mobile marketing strategy and be exposed to the best in class mobile media leaders in South Africa. And you can get your tickets by going onto eventbrite.com and searching for MMA Smarties Forum. So Smarties like the Smarties that you eat, MMA Smarties Forum, Wi-Fi, drinks and snacks will be provided, guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seat. And that is of course free for attendance. That's in August. So please go and visit Eventbrite now. Remember, we also spoke about the hookup dinner coming up. The hookup dinner is an ongoing networking forum that is always happening throughout the course of the year. If you want to get more information and look for an event in your area, visit hookupdinner.co.za and this is usually free entry unless otherwise stated. And then remember also My Biz Expo is coming up in Port Elizabeth in Cape Town. Go visit mybizexpo.co.za, get your free tickets and more bookings. It was an amazing space for you to network, so be sure to get in on that one there. I hope you've updated your events diary for the next coming months. We've given you quite a wide selection and we'll be sure to bring you even more in our upcoming episodes. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Biz Today. If you have any ideas or you'd like to tweet us with your questions around funding, find us on Twitter at biztoday underscore ZA and send us your questions. We'll be sure to give them to our guests or experts we get in studio and address those for you. Join us next time as we talk to another successful entrepreneur and talk about funding in the month of July. Goodbye.